In this video, I try three different flashes to find out if bigger really is better when it comes to shooting portraits in harsh sunlight. Hello, I'm Gavin Howey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today you join me on location and I'm joined by Ify, who's going to be my model for this shoot. And the shoot is quite a challenging one because we wanted to shoot up against the, the stairs here, which are a great location. However, We've got here and the sun is full on. It's extremely bright. I can't shoot with Ify in the shade because if I do, he's going to end up looking like a silhouette, which is really weird. So I've got to work out how much flash power I need to overpower the ambient and create a dramatic shot. Now I've got a bunch of different flashes to do it. I'm using a manual flash, so no TTL, no high speed sync, nothing like that. It's simply a matter of putting my camera to its fastest shutter speed for flash sync, which on the Olympus EM5 Mark II is 320th of a second, choosing an ISO that's nice and low, like 100 ISO, and working out what aperture that I'm gonna get. Well, let's start without any flash first of all. Sorry about this, Ify, this is gonna be really bright. Oh, painful, yeah? Okay, and uh, in manual mode, if I take a meter reading here, I'm actually getting a meter reading of f5. In fact, f5.6, that's pretty good. Let's see how that looks. And it looks kind of contrasty. It's not too bad, but it's not exactly brilliant. That's where the flash is gonna come in. So the first flash I'm gonna try is just the, the streak lights lithium ion zoom speed light. And this is a great little speed light because it's quite powerful. In fact, I'm gonna put the power all the way up to maximum. Now, how much light is that gonna produce? Honestly, I don't know. So let's get a meter reading. Now, I like using flash meters. They give me confidence and control. All I've done is set my meter to the same shutter speed, 320, ISO, 100, and it'll tell me the aperture I need for correct exposure when I hold it underneath if his chin and I'm getting uh, F8. So I'm getting one stop more light out of this guy than from the ambient on its own. That's pretty good. I'm actually quite surprised about that. I didn't think it'd be that bright. All I need to do then is to dial in F8, take the shots. Here we go. Again, that's perfect, same spot. And that works really well. I'm quite impressed with that. It's perhaps not the most overpowering of the ambient light I've ever seen, but with one speed light, that's quite good. But what would happen if I had a more powerful light? Let's get this out of the way, bring something bigger in. So this time I've got the same light modifier. It's still a Westcott Rapidbox Duo, but inside is now my favorite flash, the Streaklight 360. 360 watt seconds of light. That should be pretty powerful in theory. It should be a lot more powerful than the speed light. Well, let's find out. I've actually got it set to a quarter power at the moment. And if I just get my little light meter, do the same light meter reading again, I'm getting F11 at a quarter power. So that's already one stop more than I was getting with the streak light speed light at full power. So let's try F11, same exposure, same shutter speed, same ISO. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, and that's darker. The ambient light, that sky is now considerably darker than it was before. But of course, that's only at a quarter power. What happens if I go all the way up to full power? Now, in theory, when you double the light, you add a stop. And when you double it again, you add another stop. So this should be, what, F16, F22. But is it? Let's find out. No, it's F18. And I'll double check to be sure. Yep, still F18. Why isn't it F22? Well, the harsh reality is, although these things in theory should happen in a nice linear steps, in reality, that doesn't always happen. Why it's having a, a flash meter is always such a good idea just to double check everything. Nonetheless, that's still brighter. So let's dial in F18. Same shutter speed, same ISO. The ambient light should be much darker now. Okay, and again, look at the underside. That's great for me. Yeah, that's terrific. As you can see, that looks completely different. Now we've really overpowered the ambient. That blue sky has gone very, very deep blue. So my final light is this guy here, which is an Explore 600 from Flashpoint. It's a 600 watt second light rather than the 360 of the last one. So it's almost a whole stop brighter, which should mean that it should be 
a whole stop brighter. But notice that I've had to change the softbox. I don't have a Westcott softbox that will fit this Bowens mounted flash. That might have a difference because light modifiers, well, they modify light and they all do it slightly more efficiently or less efficiently, bigger or smaller than each other. So let's see if I do get an extra stop. Here we go. It's on full power, but I'm still getting F18, still getting the same power settings. Will the light spread be different? Well, let's take a picture and find out. Terrific. As you can see, those two shots are very similar, even though the lights that make the shots and the modifiers are slightly different. Yep, there are always gonna be slight variations, but sometimes having a more powerful flash doesn't always equal more light, especially when the size of the softbox or modifier you're using increases in size too. So that's worth remembering. It's not just power, there's more to it than that. Well, this really was a great location. And even though it's in full sun on a really hot summer's day, I think we came up with some really good shots. The flashes and the different modifiers, they all played their part in creating the final look. And it's amazing how having a different flash will give me more control over the light. It's not always a case of bigger is better either, which is an interesting lesson for everybody. So if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.